Hey guys, it's Jen from My Create Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create these cute little socks using sublimination printer and ink. They were so much fun to create, and the possibilities are endless on what else to create. These are just little Paw Patrol socks that I made for my cousin for his birthday coming up. I definitely like this a lot better than the regular vinyl. I will show you. I did this one with HTV. And you can totally see the difference on these, how much softer these are. It's just printed right into the material itself rather than having something hard on top of it. So I really, really like how these turned out. Um, this is never going to come off. And this was my first time doing sublimination, and I really love how they turned out. I love the color. I love the texture of it. Everything was amazing. So in this tutorial, I will show you exactly how to do these socks step by step. And you can take this and turn it into anything, into t-shirts into bags, whatever you have that you want to subliminate, I will teach you how to do it in this video, so stay tuned. Alright, so I'm starting in Design Space, and these are the ones that I'm going to be cutting out. Um, I'm so excited to try this. I've actually never done sublimination before, but I've done a lot of research on this. My husband actually bought me a sublim sublimination printer, and I'm so excited to use it. So I'm going to show you really quick these designs here. I just went into upload. I actually purchased a whole bunch of SVG files from Etsy. So I went into upload. Now I'm going to go into view all, and I'm going to go up to the top here and, and type in paw. I'm just trying to find Paw Patrol stuff that I um, purchased. Like I said, I bought a bunch of stuff off of Etsy. So I just um, clicked on the ones that I wanted here. Um, I'm actually going to take this one too as well. So I'm going to click to uh, put to canvas and it's going to bring it up really quick. Sorry, my voice is going, I'm just getting over a cold. I'm just going to shrink it down first. <clears throat> Sorry, shrink it down first. And then you make it to the size that you want. So I'm making little socks for a two-year-old. So I resize these to the size that I wanted. So it's two by 2.28. So the way I did that is just type... <clears throat> Baxter! So all I did was type in up here too. I leave it locked so it doesn't skew it anyway and it'll automatically do the height for me. So I just changed this to two and then I pushed enter and then it automatically changes the height for me. As you see, it matches all of these other ones. Um, so that's how I did that. Same thing with the Marshall, the Chase and the Rubble. I just typed in 2.3 and then I just automatically let it do the height for me. Otherwise, if you unlock it here, I'll show you real quick. You unlock it and then you change it to be 2 by, let's say, 3 even. Like, that would be better. Just skews it. So I like how it does it automatically for you. So I'm going to delete this one since I don't need it. And what I need to do, actually... All right, I'm going to start all over because that didn't work. All right, guys, so I'm starting in Design Space, and I'm going to show you how I do this. My husband actually bought me a sublimination printer for Christmas, so this is the first time I'm doing this, but I've done a lot of research on this. So I'm going to go to Upload here because I'm going to find some images that I want. I'm going to click on View All here, and I'm going to go up here to the Search Image Bar, and I'm going to type in Paw. I'm doing little um, socks for my cousin's... Uh, son, so my little cousin, he's so dang cute. So he loves Paw Patrol. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these and um, put them in. I purchased these from Etsy. You can purchase it from anywhere you want. I can leave the link below for the ones that I purchased here. But I'm just gonna grab a couple of these. Um, those ones, I think I might do the paw print as well. And I'm gonna grab their names up here too. I'm trying to match them up because I know the different colors here. So we'll see if I got those correct. So I'm gonna go down here click to uh, add to canvas and then it's going to bring them up rather large so you're going to have to resize these to whatever size you want like i said i'm putting these on little uh, toddler socks so i think in um like two by two might work really well all right so it brings it up all here they are rather large i'm just going to keep it selected all together and just make them smaller for now so we can see them on the screen and then i'm just going to take each one and move them so we can see what each one of them look like. Kind of put them where they're supposed to go. This one, I don't think I have that one. Just trying to match the colors up here. Whoops. So, hmm. Looks like I'm missing a tracker and a rocky. I must have not put those in with the SVG file. So I'm just going to get rid of those guys. And maybe I think I'm just going to work with these three here. Um, 
I'll get rid of this one as well. So I'm gonna work with these three. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I wanna change the size on these and I also wanna do it so it prints and cuts so that I can print it on my sublimination printer. But the first thing I wanna do is actually change the size. Like I said, I want the sock to be about a two by two, or I'm sorry, the image to be two by two. What I used to do in the in the past was go up here, unlock it, and change it to be a two by two. But I've noticed that skews things a lot. So from now on, I always just leave it locked and change the height on here. So I'm gonna leave it to I'm gonna put it to two, and then it's automatically gonna change the height to make it look better. So I'm gonna change each one of these just to two and let it automatically change the height for me. So I'm gonna go here and just push two. And as you can see, they look much better. They look really similar. You can go up here and kind of see the height difference on here. That's 2.242, 2.28. I mean, so it's it's a little bit smaller for this one, but I'm not going to skew it and change it. And I actually like how large these are. I'm just going to make sure they're roughly the same size. So this one's 2.72. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to copy this 2.72, and I'm going to change it for this first one and then also the second one and let it do its job figuring out the height. So there, so there at least the width is the same and the height is just a little difference, but that that is okay. So I really like how these look. So the next thing you wanna do is flatten this. So you just wanna select it, go down here to this flatten button, and then that will automatically change it to a print then cut as you can see up here. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna to go to flatten. And I'm wondering, actually, if I'm going to cut all these out, if I can just select them all and then just do it, flatten. Yeah, here we go. But it's telling me it's too large because they're all one piece. So I'm going to have to undo what I just did. So select it all, go up to the back button. And the reason for that is just because it's telling me that the image was way too large to cut all like that. So I'm going to have to do each one individually. But just for future reference, if you have something smaller, you can do it that way rather than keep going in and doing each one of them. But... It is not going to let me, so we are just going to go to each one of these, click on them, and click flatten. So you can see here, they all say print, then cut. That is exactly what we want. We want to print this on our sublimination printer and then cut it out on our Cricut machine. So I'm going to go up here to make it. It's going to bring it to this. This is what it's going to look like when it cuts this out. I like to just maybe move them a little bit that I can get it a little bit easier out when it cuts it. So this is going to cut, this is what it's going to look out look like when it cuts out on your sublimination printer. So you wanna make sure that you have your sublimi sublimination printer paper. So I have a Epson 2720 uh, sublimination printer. It isn't actually a sublimination printer. What makes it sublimination is the ink. You wanna make sure that you put the sublimination ink in the printer and not use the regular ink that it comes with. And I'm also using it's called A Sub Sublimination Printer Paper. It's eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna leave links for everything that I use down below. Um, I, like I said, this is my first time. I'm really excited to do this and show you guys exactly how it's gonna go. So this is going to cut out on the sublimination printer. One thing you wanna do before you do anything else is go over here and mirror this. It's just like HTV heat transfer vinyl. You wanna make sure you mirror it. So turn your mirror on because if you don't do this part, you're gonna have to cancel everything and redo it again. Meaning that if I push the continue button here, it's going to tell me to send to printer. And then if I went, oops, I forgot to turn on the mirror, it won't let you for whatever reason. Um, I've seen lots of videos on this and people are like, nope, you got to go back and cancel it. So I'm not even going to try it. Make sure you please make sure that you turn your mirror on. I'm going to send it to printer and go up here. Make sure your Wi-Fi is connected to it. So I have the Epson 2720 but make sure you're going to the right one. This is just a black and white printer that I have. This one is a colored printer that I have. As you see, they're two different Epson ones. So this one was a regular printer, but we put sublimination ink inside of it. So I wanna make sure I click on the right one. I'm gonna go ahead and push print, and it's gonna send it to my printer um, behind me. So I'm gonna go ahead and print this out, and then I'll show you the next step. All right guys, so I printed out my sublimination paper. Now what I need to do is put it on my green mat and make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna pick um, a material here that I am thinking that it's going to work the best. So this paper is not too thick, um, it's kind of light, but I'm afraid that if I use the copy paper 20 pounds that it's not going to cut through enough. So I'm actually gonna grab this one here, this cardstock, heavy cardstock. And if you don't have that on your materials, you just go to here to browse all materials, and then you can just type it in um, cardstock. 
And then you can find it here. You can do a cardstock for intricate cuts, um, heavy cardstock. Here's one that I use. Um, I just put a star by it because I do use it a lot for all of my... Um, a lot of my cuts that I do, so I'm just gonna push done. So this, that was the one that I used. So, whoops, I'm glad I looked. So it I somehow put corrugated cardboard. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna go back here and push the heavy card stack. I'm gonna cut on this. So you can see it right here. I'll push edit. So this is exactly what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna put it on my green mat and I'm gonna lay it really flat. And what your Cricut's gonna do is it's gonna make a little funny noises if you never did the print and cut before. And it's actually gonna look for these register lines. So it's gonna do a little funny things first and then it's gonna go ahead and cut it out for you. So again, make sure that your image is um, mirrored. So you can see here that it is backwards actually. So I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna put this through the, my machine and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. And I actually do have my heat press set at 380 degrees for 60 seconds. So during this time, if you have a heat press or a mini press or anything, or even an iron, whatever you're going to be using, I would suggest uh, preheating it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out next with the Cricut, and then I'll get set up with my camera by my heat press. All right, guys, so here it is. I printed it off. I'm going to show you what it looks like before I take it off here. So this is the sublimination print paper. I'm going to save this, and then here are the pieces. You can see that they are backwards, so um, I did mirror them. And then these are the little socks that I'm going to be using. I just purchased these at Walmart. Um, one thing I did read a lot about is you don't want to um, just put them down. You want to take something hard. So I cut out a piece of uh, cardboard, and I'm just going to put it on the inside of this. I think there are actually things that you can buy online um, that go with the sizes of things, like t-shirts and socks and stuff. But you know what? I'm frugal, so I'm trying to do it myself. So I just cut a little piece that's going to fit the inside of here. Um, I'm just trying to match the sides up so that it's even on both sides that I get the center. Or you could always take your sock and put it flatwise, you get a line down the middle. Um, I'm just going to start with the one and I'm just going to show you how this goes. So I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to press it just for a couple seconds just to get it hot and to get it flat. I do have my heat press set at 380 for 60 seconds. Um, you do need a lot of pressure for this. So you want to put, if you have a heat press, make sure you put it on a high, high pressure. So I'm just going to take the first one just this little red one here, and you want to flip it upside down. And now you want to find the center of your sock, or whatever you're doing. You can do this with t-shirts, or whatever you might have. But I'm just trying to find the center, and wherever you like it. And I'm going to leave it right here. And then, normally you take um, tape and you put it on here, but for such a small piece, I'm not really worried about it moving too much, plus I'm only doing one at a time to show you. So I'm just taking a piece of uh, parchment paper. You can use butcher paper, you can use whatever you want. So I lay that down next, and then I'm going to put over this thicker paper. And here is where the tape would come in handy if you would move it, but I'm just being very careful and putting that on top of it. So then I'm just gonna press this and make sure if you do have a heat press that you have it on a lot of pressure. So I just have it set, like I said, for 300, 380 degrees for 60 seconds. So I'm gonna let this go. Um, and then I can show you what it looks like and then I'll do the finish of finish the rest of them and show you what they look like Here we go. So Pull this up and if you don't have a heat press, I highly highly recommend getting one of these. I absolutely love this So I'm just pulling everything away And then I'm gonna pull my little transfer away and That's how it turned out Wow, it really did turn out. Um, one thing I do see on the sack, now I definitely see where tape does come in handy. Um, unfortunately, it did move a little bit. I don't know if you see it on here, but it did move. But I don't have the specific tape for this, and I was really excited to try this out. So I'm just pulling the cardboard out, and you have to be careful. Obviously, it's very hot. Um, but I'm really excited how, whoop, how this turned out. Look at that. And I know it's going to stretch a little bit on the sock and on the, I mean, on the feet when they go on, but that's okay. So I guess I would highly suggest using the tape. Like I said, this is my first time, so you kind of live and learn. So learn with me. Um, use the tape. So I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of these guys. I'm going to open this up, put the piece of cardboard in here. I think I'm actually going to cut some more cardboard pieces out because I don't want to do one at a time. I'm kind of anxious to get these done. So I'm just doing the same thing, putting the sock on the cardboard, finding the center, and then 
I'll just give it one good press, get it warm, and then get uh, any wrinkles or anything out in there. And then just do the same thing. Um, I wish I did have uh, some tape. I think when I go back to the store, I'll be getting some of the tape. But I'm going to go ahead and do the little bone here to go with the the other one that we did. So just, again, flipping it upside down. <sighs> I feel like a dummy, guys. Am I a dummy? I should have known better to put the tape on it, but I don't have the specific tape. It is specific tape for this. You can't just use, like, um, scotch tape or anything. So I'm just going to line it up the best I can, do the same thing. Again, you live and learn. Please learn from me. Um, but again, I'm putting this parchment paper, paper over it. And then the Teflon paper. I think that's where I messed it up last time as I, I let it slide. So it's my first one. I think it's not too bad. So I'm going to finish these up. This is at 380 degrees for 60 seconds. A lot of pressure on here. I read that that's really important is a lot of pressure. So you want to make sure you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these guys up. And then I'll show you what they look like when they're all complete. All right. So I'm going to show you really quick. So I did these before. This is with HTV. So you can't stretch them really. And they, they're pretty tough like when you put your foot in here you're gonna feel all that on the inside so i'm really impressed by these there's like it's like printed on there so it's totally different here is the shirt i actually made for him it's a little chase one honestly this one took me a couple of hours to do from start to finish there are so many layers on here a couple different browns the black the blue the red uh, the pink it was awful to do and it's hard you know what kid wants a hard shirt and then i put his name on the back here and then also um same thing it's just really hard i don't know if you guys can hear that so i would rather do uh sublimination on this so i think i'm gonna actually grab another shirt from walmart i'm gonna do the same process but i'm gonna do a sublimination and i'm gonna show you guys that so if you're interested in that uh stay tuned that's going to be the next video but i did these and i just don't like them as much i used to like htv and as you can see i made an oopsie on here um HDB is not too giving when you heat press it down. It did not want to come up, so it can it actually came up and didn't stick so well. So, um, yeah, I'm in love with this. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave any comments or questions down below. If you have any suggestions on something that you can share with me or anybody else, please let me know. Um, but there is definitely going to be more videos on this. I'm going to do another one with the chase. Um... Same thing, but I'm having fun. Do you guys like this? Give me a thumbs up. Please think about sharing this video. I work really hard on my videos, and I would love to get more subscribers and more viewers, and I'd love to help other people out. So, um, yeah, happy crafting, everyone.